Watch it take the ball out of his hands. The game <laughs> is over. Yes. Hello and welcome to On The Block. I'm Joe Verfire with Zane Shaw, Igor Henriquez, and Ron Davis. Today we're going to be talking about some injuries that happened in the preseason and how those players' injuries will affect the teams. Guys, Kevin Durant went down, he's going to miss two months. How, how do you think that's going to affect your chances? They're going to drop in the power, like in the standings for sure. It's, not, it's going to be really tough for them to, uh, to maintain the top of the West. They're still a great team, they still have Westbrook, but um, they got a lot of holes in, in their team. Like, they've essentially got no bench. Um, where, where's your additional scoring coming from outside of Westbrook and Reggie Jackson? It's going to be interesting because I think Westbrook statistically was a lot better without Durant for the game to be missed last year. But I think for an extended period of time, the team is definitely going to be exposed because they have guys on their bench who were drafted high, highly, highly touted prospects like Jeremy Lamb, yeah. Perry Jones, and they're truly under-delivered. Uh, under so. Yeah. Uh, I think for them to go far, their bench really has to come in and step up for Kevin Durant. Um, and also guys like Reggie Jackson, who are going to be playing 36 to 40 minutes a night, uh, are really going to have to step up. But um, I definitely see them dropping in the standings. Uh, Portland maybe even overtaking him in the division. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you have to think that Durant, uh, you know, being one of the two best players in the league, you, you're missing that guy for two months is obviously going to cause a huge hole in, in the team. Now, Westbrook's had his injury concerns as well. If he doesn't deliver, I mean, they could really slip and have a really bad start to the year. I mean, I like Serge Ibaka. I think he's one of the best rebounders, shot blockers in the, in the league. I mean, he doesn't really bring that much offensively. The team is, is again, a decent squad I, without, the, without Durant. I mean, with them, they're, they're a great squad. So I think they'll have their struggles. They will have some issues. I can see them, again, middle of the pack until Durant comes back. And if... Durant takes some time, maybe they will slip and maybe be another two or three seed in, in the West. But besides that, I can't see them dropping it lower. It's going to be tough because Perry Jones, like you said, was a guy that was you know, at one point like a top five pick in the lottery uh, pre-draft and then he fell off really hard. He's going to be thrown in there to play some major minutes for this team and try and get some points, but I'm kind of doubting him. You know, He hasn't really shown much. He seems very, he doesn't have a handle like you mentioned before. His shot is not consistent and I'm not really sure what he does well. And you have guys like Jeremy Lamb who... We're there to replace Kevin Martin, who didn't really do too much, right? He's inefficient offensively. Steven Adams, he's another guy who's you know thrives off misses, right? You can't really throw him the ball. Kendrick Perkins, all these guys, and they just drafted Mitch McGarry, who who looked pretty good in preseason, but he's gone down with an injury. He's going to miss some time too. So this is a team that's pretty banged up. It's going to be a show and prove type of situation for OKC. Just like you guys all mentioned, with the uh, aside from those top three guys, yeah. Westbrook, Durant, Ibaka. Maybe even Reggie Jackson throw him in there. And the highly touted, the highly touted previous rookies, they're not going to really do much, or they haven't done anything to date. So yeah. it's going to be really interesting to see. Yeah, it's going to fall on Westbrook. Yeah. Scott Brooks, I think, is going to have to really adjust his lineups and be creative, try to score some points with him, right? I think it's interesting with Brooks because he's been criticized for not yes. being able to adjust game to game, uh -huh. having a very offensive mindset, and really depending on Durant to carry the load for them offensively. Um, he hasn't really been able to adjust in a seven-game playoff series. Yeah. Without Durant, you're going to have to become a much more defensive-minded team, much more gritty, grinded-out type team. Um, we'll see if Scotty Brooks can actually make the adjustment and take them to that next well, step. that's on the gear team. Like, is it, like, Definitely. It's there. Like, if he slips up or if they, if they underperform in any way, um, aside from obviously they know the injury, then that would hold much bearing on his job. But I, I'm giving Scotty Brooks to all-star break. And if, if he's not cutting it by then, I feel that they're gonna they're gonna ship him out. And they lost Tabo Stefalosha, but yeah. they you know they got Anthony Moore, who's a sharpshooter, really good. They need that to spread yes. the floor. But he's another guy who's injured, and he's gonna miss. I'm pretty sure it's it's one or two months. So yeah. Yeah. But they're banged up with injuries. Yeah, it's gonna be tough for them. But and let's let's be honest, the front office in OKC haven't really been spending that much to attract free agents. That's not been their model. They're really the team that has tanked year over year when they were the Supersonics yeah. and then had top five picks and really got gems with those picks. So a lot of the teams they're doing it now with Philadelphia mostly um, yeah. are really following this Thunder model. But uh, with guys that are underperforming and when guys get banged up, it's really hard to yeah. follow through. It's one of those years where they wish they still had James Harden, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, but like we said, they were tough against the cap. They kind of had to make it. Maybe it was a year too early and they got rid of him, right? Maybe at least try and win the championship that year. Because let's be honest, they didn't get much back for him. And they were right there. They were, they were right there with James Harden. Like the bullet, 
spend the money or do what you do and keep it for that uh, remaining year. They have to draft it particularly well the last couple of years either, right? Yeah, I mean, they have the low picks as well, right? Exactly. Like Adams, a lot of people like him, but you know, he's solid down low. They needed a center, but there's not really much he does for you offensively other than get a lot of fouls, block some shots, and yeah. rebound, right? But I think they needed some secondary he's a great scoring. Piece, but he's not exactly. He's not a secondary secondary yeah. scorer. Yeah. That's what Morrow was brought in for. But now that he's banged up. Uh, but they might start off slow. They'll probably start off slow, right? They're still going to win some games. They've been really good at home. Sure. But this in a couple months, team. they're going to be clicking, right? How high do you guys think they can finish it in the West? Second, first, third? I really think if you have to run out to Christmas, it's really going to hurt them offensively. I don't see them maybe doing as well as what they did last year. Perhaps maybe a four or five yeah, seed. Exactly. Um, yeah. And then, you know, it really depends. Because truthfully, Russell Westbrook hasn't stayed healthy as well. So it, if either him or Reggie Jackson go down with a lack of depth in that team, they're really going to struggle. That would mean pretty much, a, well, them, I don't know who they would play because we're going to assume that the Spurs will finish first, right? And mm-hmm. OKC was second last year, so let's let's say that the Clippers finish second. Yeah. Golden State maybe at third? Yeah, maybe Portland. Yeah. Golden State, Portland, so that'd be a tough first round match. Waterline All-Star that's going to you know miss some, uh, miss some serious time. It's going to be over two months. How do you guys think Washington's going to do? They're one of the deepest teams in the league. Really, especially up front with their front court. But how do you guys think? I think they'll be able to absorb a loss and feel a lot better than OKC will because of their because of their depth. Um, I mean, I think they can still win their division without them. Or well, essentially, they'll be back well before that becomes the decision. But I think that they'll be able to absorb it a lot easier with the added depth, and um, they'll be okay. I, I think they'll still be a top four, top five in the East with with the LL. And I like the mentality that they're coming in with this year uh, with Coach Whitman. John Wall has publicly said that he wants them to be the bad boys and the bad boy Pistons, so the team that a lot of these teams in the East are going to face and not want to play because they're really going to grind it out and be physical with you night in and night out. Um, losing Beal, if you get him around early December, I don't think it's a huge loss. The team really does revolve around John Wall, and then they have a really, really strong defensive front court. Um, I definitely think they're going to be damaged in the East. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, if you look at it, you know, they brought in Paul Pierce. Uh, you got uh, you got Gortad, you know, you got John Wall. They have, again, like Ronald was saying, a better core than, than OKC has. Um, so I think that they'll be fine. Again, the East is pretty weak in, in itself, so they won't drop off significantly. They should still win the, the division. I don't think there will be a massive, massive hit for them. What about, you know, like we said, like there's not really the biggest... Uh, challenge in that division with, I guess, Atlanta and Indiana being those teams, right? Yeah. What do you, what do you, Miami, actually, too. Let's not forget about Miami. Do you think Miami might be able to challenge that division? I think they're, they're like a wounded dog right now. Yeah. They still have great players, yeah. but, you know, like, they, they took a big hit losing LeBron. Dwayne Wade is, is essentially a shell of what he used to be. And Dwayne Wade's one of my favorite players. No disrespect to him, but he's just not the same anymore. Luol Deng, like, he's great too. He's aging. Granger, like, uh... Yeah, it's Chris Bosch's team right now. Yeah, we talked about James Ennis before. And Chris Bosch is never it. really a yeah. tough guy. Yeah. He's never a dominant tough guy. On the Raptors, I mean, he was like, he was the Raptors franchise player, but Chris Bosch has never by any stretch of the mind been known as the tough guy or the prototypical go-to guy. You know what I mean? He is, he's been the go-to guy because they're... By they're default. Lot, by default, exactly. The thing is, I really see them making an adjustment because Chris Bosch took a huge sacrifice. You could argue that he's probably one of the best third options that we've seen in NBA history, arguably. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people say Dwayne Wade is reliant on his athleticism and all he has is his strength, athleticism, and ability to attack the rim. But he's a really smart player. I think he's he been able to adjust in recent years. Mm-hmm. And if you look at his efficiency, it's still really good. The real question is, is he going to be able to sustain it for an 82-game se- season? Yeah. Uh, Miami needs it this season more than ever. We'll see if he can deliver. All right. Well, when we come back, we're going to be focusing on the Boston Celtics, more specifically Rajon Rondo coming back from his injury. We're going to talk about the Toronto Raptors finalizing their roster and who's going to give them a challenge in the Atlantic. When we come back on the block. He, he always told his team, just go ahead and run your stuff. DeMar DeRozan, two-handed slam. Well, I made that point to you in the first half. There are times that they look in, in, as if there's a... Welcome back to On the Block. We're going to be talking about Rajon Rondo, who has rushed back from an injury to come back a lot faster than we thought. Now, guys, is he coming back early to, bu- to boost his trade value, or is, this, is he fully healthy? 
there's really nothing for them in Boston right now. I think Boston's a, a rebuilding team. They, they need to, you know, have that rebuild continue, and I think they need to trade him to get assets for him because realistically, if he wants to be a winner, if he wants to, get, you know, try to get that championship, he needs to get out of Boston. Again, with all his injuries, is he going to be able to, to be a significant part to another team? Possibly. It depends what system he's in and what team he gets traded to. Now, again, I think Boston, I think I like Avery Bradley on, on Boston right now. I think he's, he's suitable to, to be a point guard for that team. Not a great one, but a, a suitable one. Uh, and the team that I think that could be in that mix for him is, is possibly Houston. There's some other ones that, that could come across. But Ronald's serviceable because, again, he's a great passer of the ball, great on, on assists. He can't really shoot. But he can definitely build a team to the next level. Houston can use him. I mean, they got, they got Harden, they got you know, Dwight Howard. I mean, if he's able to, to really penetrate, he can do a lot with that team. Huh? He's on the first thing smoking out of Boston. He's not, yeah, he's not, uh, I don't think he has any intentions on, uh, on uh, rebuilding on that team, developing that team. Coming from actually winning the championship with, with Hall of Famers to where he is now, no disrespect to the guys who are on the team, but really and truly, like, he knows, just like we know, that they're, they're a long way from getting back to uh, the Eastern Conference final, the Finals, let alone the Finals themselves. And let's be honest here, Boston are trying to get as many ping pong balls as possible this year. They're going to trade him long before they lose him in the summer for nothing. Exactly. There's going to be a lot of suitors. I think he's probably going to be the hottest trade commodity from now until the trade deadline. Um, I see a lot of teams, like Igor said, uh, Houston, Sacramento, Dallas, a lot of teams in need of a strong point guard, especially in a point guard heavy league, that really can drive them to the next level and really execute a half-court offense. Um, I really think that... Uh, they also have guys that can come in, young guys like Avery Bradley, but along with guys like Marcus James Smart. Young, Marcus Smart, um, mm -hmm. that really want to get PT and need to develop for that team down the line. Uh, New York Knicks are another team that we talked about um, you know, off camera, but at the same time, he doesn't really fit that triangle offense, but that's a city that loves their stars, and the Mario Sotomayor didn't really pan out too well, so maybe that's another team that he goes to. But let's shift now really quickly to the Toronto Raptors. They finished with the best record in the preseason, and I know a lot of people don't really care because it's the preseason, but let's be honest, they looked really good, they have a lot of depth, and they ran through pretty much everybody they played. And when they played the Knicks, granted again it's preseason, but the Knicks looked terrible. Do you guys think the Raptors are going to run away with this really early in the Atlantic? Um, I don't think they're going to run away with it, albeit though the Raptors did have the best record, they did play really well. One thing that I didn't like was uh, they were turning the ball over like crazy. And mind you, maybe that's just... just Will guess, Cherry running the point? Yeah, that was, that was a disaster. <laughs> but, um... And mind you, maybe it's just a preseason thing. Guys weren't fully engaged like they like they should be. But um, I don't think they're gonna run away with the Atlantic. But I definitely think that they're gonna they're gonna win. It. And especially because a lot of their game, I think seven or so of their first games are all at home. I mean. Yeah, yeah. something all on that line. Yeah. So I think yeah, they have a very home heavy schedule from yeah. now basically until Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I think. The games that I went to in preseason, the crowd were into it. I mean, I went to a game against Maccabi Haifa, and it was almost sold out mm -hmm. with the crowd cheering each and every possession. So um, I think home court advantage for the Raptors is going to be vital going forward. Um, and then with the injuries to Brook Lopez and the Atlantic division not looking so strong with tanking teams like Boston and Philly, the Raptors could really run away with a strong lead early in the season. I mean, so far it's been pretty, uh, pretty good in terms of the new guys that have come in. James Johnson came back. But Lou Williams has been pretty impressive. I, I think he's going to be a really good guy off the bench that's going to make a difference. And they're stronger than they were last year. And I, like, uh, like he mentioned in terms of uh, the injuries to the other other teams, like, like the Mets and with Lopez and stuff like that, there really isn't another team that's going to be really in there to try to win that division from them. So to me, the Raptors are a team, again, that's going to be a strong playoff team, and they just need to get that to that next level. I want to send over under on this. Let's play this game real quick. Raptors, 55 wins. Oh wow! In a weak division, in a weak division, like wow. you said, we're talking about Philadelphia, who might win twelve games all year, and Boston, and Boston maybe who might win twenty games. I think fifty, honestly, I think fifty is a lock for this team in this division. Oh yeah, no, they'll right? get fifty wins. So, uh, do you guys think they can push for fifty-four, fifty-five? I'm an optimistic Raptors fan, and I don't <laughs> think they're going to hit fifty-five wins. Getting fifty-five wins is almost saying that they're definitely going to be top two in the East, most likely winning the East. And they could. Um, and it's tough. Yeah, they have. They, they have really, other than Cleveland, you could, yeah. them and Washington are really the only two teams battling, right? They're yeah, but the thing right? is, I think they can decimate both teams right. in our conference, but yeah. um, can they do with these road trips in the West, playing teams like Golden State, Clippers, San Antonio, the Raptors always struggle against, um, I don't see them winning 55. I could see somewhere on the range of 50, uh, but who knows?
Over, I think it'll be over 50. I, I yeah, think definitely yeah over I agree. 50. I think I'll give them a ball 52, 53. They won't hit 55. I hope you guys put me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, the Raptors definitely do have. They've done a lot of retooling, and I know a lot of the times before in past seasons, everybody knows the Raptors were pretty much the laughing stock of the yeah. NBA. You know, like one they, of them, yeah. They, yeah, they're one of the laughing stocks of the NBA. Whereas we, they didn't have depth. Like they didn't, they didn't really have any great players. Uh, like we were talking about earlier in the segment, Chris Bosh was our go-to guy. No disrespect to him, great player, but not, not he's not the 1A player that you need on a team. Things have changed now. Like the Raptors Definitely. are so deep. So I think, I think these road trips, like people are going to be surprised. Like, you know, guys generally know the, 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 the book's out already. They found that out in the playoffs. Like, okay, wow, DeMar, Kyle, these guys can play. But there's still going to be some more discovering happening when the Raptors start showing up in other people's arenas because they're going to be like, holy crap, these guys are really deep. And they've got a ton of scorers on the team. And this new young big that we got from uh, Lithuania that's just going to be beasting this season. Great defense I think speaking of those West Coast shows, remember last year in Oklahoma City when they went on the road and they beat Oklahoma City? Yeah. yeah. Very impressive. They lost, yeah. they lost them at home, and I think it was double overtime. They went to that game. But that game, when they went to OKC and they went on the road, I think they won another. They were up, I think, by 20 in Golden State, but they ended up blowing that. Yeah. But when they went on the road, they started winning those games. I think teams really realized that this Raptors team might be for real. Yeah, they're not a joke. Yeah, I mean, they got a lot of team toughness mixed with, uh, mixed with athleticism and score. Uh, props to Greg's uh, Stisma for uh, making the, the team. Making the cut. And making the cut. Uh, boy, Steve. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, they, they're going to be a challenger in the East for sure. I think we all, everyone knows that. We're just going to see where exactly they fit in there. Sticking with the Western Conference, we're going to talk about the Golden State Warriors and more specifically Clay Thompson. Now, there's been some rumors that Clay Thompson and his agent has kind of leaked it, that he's unhappy that the team has not offered him a max deal. Guys, do you think that Clay Thompson's worth a max contract? Now, we know that he's a great player. He's up and coming. He can shoot the lights out, the Splash Brothers, blah, blah, blah. With this is a guy that on a playoff team, a top three, four team in the West, you dish out a max contract to a guy like that when you already have Curry and some other players that are going to get paid. Man, I think he has a hell of an agent. I would not give him max, but in his defense, I do see him looking for max. He had a great summer with Team USA, playing both sides of the ball on defense, probably arguably one of their best defensive players there. Um, help, playing with Steph Curry is obviously going to open up the floor for you. And at the same time, he's seeing guys like Gordon Hayward, Lance Stevenson getting the big contracts. Um, doesn't hurt to ask for Max. I definitely think there's going to be some negotiation because Golden State with their salary cap have no way of paying him that. Um, mm-hmm. But I think he does get a pretty hefty deal going forward. I think he'd, he'd, um, at this stage in his career, he's not deserving of a Max contract yet. Um, he's definitely worth a lot of money. Um, it's hard for me to tell another man how he should spend his money or how he should acquire <laughs> his money. But I would think with, with, the new, uh, with the new TV contract, there's going to be a yeah. lot more money being funneled into these teams now, too, with, with the new CBA and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So if I were his agent advisor, and I'd probably get fired for telling him this, I'd be like, man, bite the bullet, create a winning team, raise your stock even more, and then, and get, a bigger contract. Yeah. And then get a bigger contract. We, we have an owner that's... You know, one of the big shots in Silicon Valley, you can definitely ask. Never want to get fired. That's true. Never want to get fired. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But like I said, uh, who am I to tell another man how to spend his money? money. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of Thompson, I pretty much see him uh, as a better version of uh, Born Hayward. And you look, you look what Hayward got. I don't think he's worth the max money, but he should be getting paid more than Gordon Hayward, in my uh, personal opinion. So he should get his money. Shouldn't get max, but just a, maybe a smidge below max in a, in a couple of years. Uh, again, he needs. I think to raise his game just a little bit more, see what he can do without Steph. But he again, to me, he's a better player than Hayward, so he should get more money than Hayward. Simple as that. The only thing that I'm thinking, though, is sometimes what players do, is it seems like he's doing it, he's trying to give some, give himself some leverage and say, like, threatened by leaving. Maybe like Lance Stevenson, they offered him a, a lot of money. He turned it down, he got less of Charlotte. But um, if he wants to go to a worse team and maybe get some more money, he can do that. But it seems like he's a guy that wants to win. He loves yeah. Curry. They're great together. Is that the game that he wants to yeah. Play? Do you want to really sacrifice what you're going to make another five or six million dollars, maybe one or two a year, to leave the team and go right. to a big middle middle tier team? Right. It's all about the Benjamins, baby. We've yeah, right. seen it happen. We've seen uh, Eric Bledsoe negotiate a better contract. James Harden taking only two million dollars more a year to go to Houston and play for a team that's not nearly as good as those. But that's a, that's the problem that I have though, because exactly now you're going to take a max deal, and you look at all these teams that have a big three. And to be honest, teams that have big threes, their benches are atrocious because they have no money to sign exactly. anybody, Definitely. right? Now, if you have LeBron James, you might be able to get away with that because yeah. guys will take less money to play with you. 
Who's going to go to Houston to take less money for like Dwight Howard and James Harden? Exactly. Guys who don't eat with second-tier players. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's a, a small, small, small bit off topic, but like, mm-hmm. I, this was brought up. I was, I was watching a show recently, and the way that Phoenix did things where they, they brought in Isaiah Thomas, they already had Dragage, and they have Bledsoe. Like, they're paying those guys a lot of money, and realistically, only two can really play at this at the same time. So that, 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 to me, never made much sense. I don't know if they were planning to trade somebody. But like that's considered their big three per se, and doesn't really make much sense the way they fit them in. I could be wrong. But their front court is all pretty young. You got the Morris brothers, yeah. probably. They're not really making too much money. I think they just signed the brothers actually to an extension, but yeah. they're maybe thirty million dollar contract. Yeah. Total, right? I think if Clay was um, not that Clay isn't a smart guy, but I think the best option would be the Clay same team, just like you said with Harden. Like he took two more, it would, two, two million two, dollars, two million more yeah, yeah. to go to Houston, which pretty much. They're not as good as Oklahoma City was. Like he could have had a better career, or he, or he could have created a better name for himself, uh, a better image for himself by staying with OKC. What's two million dollars? Like really and truly? Yeah. I mean, two million dollars. You get that. You get that. Yeah. You get that in advertising and all those deals, right? You get into those. He might be under Dwight's uh, shadow in Houston, but at that, at that time he wasn't. Yeah. And to me, I think he just wanted to get out of that shadow of, of, of Westbrook and Durant, and I think that was might have been a little bit more important to him then. Again, the young guys tend to think that way sometimes, and it maybe and bite him in the in the blood. Yeah. And is it worth Egos, it though? Yeah. But, but I mean, is it worth it? So he's he wanted to get out. He wanted to be the star-studded affair. He wants to be yeah. that guy. Okay, you're probably never going to win a championship. Is that worth it? Yeah, I mean, no, I'd rather all. be I'd rather be one B or or the second. You want to be Chris Bosh is pretty much what well, you're I mean, saying, like, right? Well, we had that yeah. in Toronto with McGrady, right? McGrady yeah. wanted out of out of Carter's uh, shadow, and he could have really done and great things with him here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, same thing. And I think Clay Thompson should, uh, if anything, Clay Thompson should do a good history lesson and go back into players who took max contracts, left their teams, or tried to become that star player. It never worked out. It never works out. So yeah. maybe he should look right. into that, see how that panned out for all those other guys, and then make his decision before he gets that max money. Okay. I think it comes as a big distraction, to, especially with the timing. You've had such a great summer. But to make it public and ask your yeah. agent to talk about this with the owners and have it out in the news on a day-to-day basis about wanting more money, um, it's definitely a big distraction with the season yeah. starting next week. Especially with the new coach there. Steve Kerr just coming in. They have a yeah. pretty good... It seems like they're a team that enjoys each other. They're, they're like a family. And to have that out, you know, out loud and for the, to be in the media about how you're unhappy that you weren't offered a max deal yet. Yeah. They haven't said they're not going to pay him. They might end up giving him a max deal. But because they haven't offered it yet, he's you know going out and... and Coming in distractions and tears. He's essentially created a wound, and he's going to be throwing salt, salt into it. You know, it's exactly. not, it's not going to end up good because that's a really good team. They're going to be a really good team. They can really, uh, they're going to give guys a lot of problems in the West as they have been doing. Yeah. But it's going to be a, it's going to be a great season, and I'm looking forward to it. When we come back, we're going to talk about a Canadian legend, Steve Nash, going to miss the season with a back injury. Lakers will be without him. When we return on the block. Nash and Kobe. Eye to eye contact and get it to Kobe. He's going to go. Back to Kobe. Under the net. Great pass to Jim. Assistant, I still like to see the ball get back and ties in. Ah! And just bounce to Nash. And Hill lays it up uh, in the offseason. Sign him. Simple and sound. Steve Nash, middle of the floor. Fundamental bounce pass. Good spacing by Earl Clark. Runs hard and gets rewarded. That's just, you know, if you're a youth coach or a high school coach, that's just beautiful to see. Just the perfect bounce pass. Welcome back to On the Block. Now, Steve Nash went down with an injury. He hurt his back, and he's going to miss the entire season, which opens the door to his retirement. Guys, he has this year left on his deal. He's not retiring because he's going to get paid for it still. But what do you guys think about Nash? Greatest Canadian player, clearly, of all time. Um, how did the news affect you? Because I was going to say, when I read it, I was in the gym and I saw it. And, you know, I stopped working out for a good five minutes. Because I, was, <laughs> I was just in awe. I couldn't believe it. But uh, how, do you guys, how did you guys take the news? I got so I, I gotta say I was in shock when I first heard the news. Um, I should have been kind of prepared for it based on what has happened in LA and he's been injured. He hasn't really lived up to the $30 million contract, um, but truthfully he's earned every single penny throughout his entire career. Um, and sad to say he's a two-time MVP, but he's never actually been to the finals. With that said, 
he has carried Canada basketball yeah. for the last 15 years, and he really is the main reason why a lot of kids coming up nowadays look at point guards like Corey Joseph, Tyler Ennis, and I'm sure there's a lot more to come, mm-hmm. uh, not only out of Toronto, but all of Canada, to be coming up through the system, um, all due to Steve Nash. So, uh, really, as you can tell, devastating news for me, yeah. um, but a great career. What more can I say about Nash? It's not even, a, for me with Nash, it's not a being that I'm Canadian, that we're all Canadian. It's not so much losing a great, uh, losing a great basketball player. It's like, we look, it hurt me because it's like we lost an ambassador. Just like you were saying, you know, there's so many kids who, who were playing basketball because Steve Nash made that possible. Before him, like, who, who, who was there? Nobody. No, there, people used yeah. to say Vince Carter because he played for the Raptors. That was their inspiration. But yeah. as a Canadian, it was definitely just Nash. It was Steve Nash, and he actually made that happen. So, and, and just, just the kind of person that he is, the way that he carries himself, like, on the court, off the court, in the media, uh, the things that he believes in. I know he's very green, like, he's very... Uh, He's very into the whole and go friendly, go friendly way. You know, just like he's just he's just a good person, you know. And he's he's our ambassador, and it just feels like we've lost him. And like you said, he didn't even get a chance yeah. to get to the finals. Um, the only MVP hurt actually never make the NBA finals in her entire career, tough. which is tough. But in a tough Western Conference, going up the li- against the likes of Kobe, yeah. Shaq, yeah. Duncan, Duncan, yeah. you know. If those guys weren't around, how many championships would Steve Nash have? I'd say at least two or three. It was definitely a sad day for Canadian basketball. Yeah, I'll give uh, Nash full credit. I mean, he did uh, exactly what these guys have been saying. He had a huge mark on Canadian basketball. Now, I've never been the biggest Steve Nash fan. Uh, just some, you know, something just never clicked with me with him. Again, I understand you know, he, he had that mark, but he, to me, he, he had some deficiencies. I mean, uh, his defensive game wasn't all, all that great. And to me, he... Uh, I know I just never really got to that point with Nash, but I'll give him full credit. The two-time MVP, you know, the mark he had on Canadian basketball. Uh, was I surprised that he was going to miss the whole season? Not really. I mean, he's, he's, uh, I think he's 42 now, I believe. I think he's played 62 or 63 games. Yeah, he's a tough guy. I'll give, yeah. yeah, I'll give him full credit. He's a tough guy. But the last couple of years with the Lakers, it, it, I mean, I think he was supposed to be day-to-day with, la- with the injury last year that he had. He ended up missing the whole season, so... His body broke down on him. I mean, he's not, never been the biggest guy in the world in the NBA. So, you know, kudos to him for, for doing what he did for Canadian basketball. Um, and again, I hope perhaps that he does come back for even for a small bit for, for next season. But if he hasn't, I mean, he left his mark on Canadian basketball and he should be uh, applauded for it. I think the whole thing when the injury broke to before they said that he was going to be over the season, when it was said that he hurt his back lifting bags. And I remember yeah. people hearing about that and people, you know, thinking, oh, he's an old man. He hurt himself picking up bags, right? And that kind of really put a hit on him, too, because I watched him in the preseason. I think it was a game against Utah, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, he was making, he looked like the old Nash. Obviously, not, the, you know, mm-hmm. never the fastest guy, or whatever, but he was making some great behind the back passes, mm-hmm. no look passes, hitting some threes. Like and that's his style. Yeah, and I think that's what people liked about Nash. Yeah, he mm-hmm. wasn't really the most athletic guy, obviously. But it was just the creativity on the court. Yeah. You know, those behind the back passes. Remember he was in the in the dunk contest with Amari doing the yeah. elbow and the kicks and all that yeah. stuff. Like that's stuff that you don't see really any NBA player doing. You know, he was multi talented athlete. Yeah. And, and that's background. what people are gonna yeah. miss about him, I think. And also the fact that he was a great guy. Yeah. Spoke really well, great interview. Yeah, he did a lot. And, and then there was a thirst for him in this city where Early on, everyone was hoping, you know, Steve Nash is going to be the savior of the, of the Toronto Raptors. It never ended up happening, and he ended up going to Phoenix, to the Lakers, to Dallas. But, I mean, he had his effect here in Toronto, like, like you mentioned here. I think Vince Carter should get a lot of the credit for, for the Canadian basketball uprising, but as an ambassador for the Canadian game, it had to be Nash. For sure. Yeah, because even the Olympics, remember in 2000, I remember that team was atrocious. Really, but they had Nash, and, and I'm not really sure exactly how far they went, but they went further than they should have. Yeah. Well, he's certainly still going to have a presence with Team Canada basketball. Yeah. He's yeah. going to be really overlooking things and acting as a GM because mm-hmm. there's going to be some tough decisions being made in the 2016 Olympics. Who's going to make the Canadian team? Who's not going to make it? How that team is going to be structured? Um, so that will, he'll definitely play a big part in that. Um, based on his charisma and being such a likable guy, I could definitely see the guy being on TV. He has a lot of segments on Grantland. Um, I'm, oh, sure. He'd be a great guy to have on TNT. Yeah, he he's, he's, he's a funny guy too. Yeah, yeah. Funny he's stuff. definitely going to have a, a great career that's going to continue. Oh yeah, post basketball. Yeah, definitely. and that's great. And I want to see him do that. It's just, it's just sad that we don't actually, we probably will never see him play on an NBA court again. 
the guy that I can think of, not to get too off topic, but the guy I think of that you know was a great player that you want to see off the NBA too, like in, in post basketball with Shaq. Where like Shaq's another guy who a great player, MVP, champion, and all that stuff. But his personality just yeah. transcended, I think, basketball too. Where, like people were interested, and in, you know, he always had some you know quick shots of the media and joking around and all that <laughs> stuff. And I think that you know, Nash is kind of like that too, right? Like his interviews, like I said, they're pretty good, whatever. But he's done some comedy stuff. I remember like some vitamin water commercials that he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That but, was yeah really with funny. Shaq, as long as he's not acting, everything's all good. Yeah, yeah. Or rapping. Or well, you know what? Uh, the, the, the rapping was bad, <laughs> but you know, if you ever watched like uh, Kazam, that was pretty bad. <laughs> okay. That was yeah, pretty bad. I like I like uh, <laughs> blue chips. Was it with Nick Nolte? And he had some like like a blue steel or something like that, where he's like some kind of superhero thing. Uh, yeah, I forget what it was. Hammer. Shaq's got uh, quite a bit of a reputation on that. Yeah, his, his personality and uh, his presence is is definitely a lot bigger than he is in the yeah. physical form. Sure. And I uh, and the same goes for Nash too. You know, although he's small, he's he's got a big personality and, and a big heart that definitely shows. And it just like I said, it just hurts to see him go. But um, I'm sure that there'll be a lot of great things coming through. I remember back in the day, you guys would remember, but remember Vince Carter used to have those charity games in Toronto, the All Star yeah. Charity Games. Mm -hmm. And then once Vince left New Jersey, Nash brought in his own. Remember, he used to bring some guys. I never ended up going to them, but yeah. this guy was always <laughs> he's always doing charity. He's yeah. always, he brought in a lot of the Phoenix guys at the time. I remember that were mm -hmm. in town, but those were always. I think I'm pretty sure they were sellouts. Like he did a lot of stuff for the community, and he's just you know a good guy. That's Next, why we lost an ambassador. Yeah. yeah. Now, the last question I'm going to leave you guys with is, where do you guys see him, not in best point guards of all time, that's going to be a tough one, but just of this generation. Let's say from the 2000s, 2000, 2010, where would you put him in terms of... 2000 to 2010? Yeah, that decade. Oh. Well, I mean, he's, as a two-time MVP, I mean, you got you got to put him pretty high up. I mean, I, I personally would take Jason Kidd over him, for one. Uh, I, I mean, come to the rest of my mind, I don't know who else would really be high up there. I'm gonna say I'm, I put them top five. Yeah, I'm gonna say so top five. Make them top five. Who else is in that conversation for you guys? Um, Parker. Yeah, Parker's in that conversation. Um, Rondo has a championship, but he hasn't been in the league long enough, and his body of work isn't even close to where uh, Steve Nash's is. Um, Chris Paul. Chris yeah, and Paul. if you're yeah, if you're saying 2000 to 2010, you know John Stockton was still. Pretty decent in that in that time frame, so I would say I would put Stockton over him if again because Stockton retired. Stockton's a really good question. Stockton, yeah. Stockton has a lot of the stats. Yeah, right? I think like, Stockton's on another level because of the yeah. longevity of his career. Yeah. He, he was, really, I would say, he's more '90s guy. He played into yeah. the 2000, 2001, yeah. I think. Definitely. But, like, yeah. but yeah. I don't even know if he got that. Was, yeah. Yeah. It was more than '90s. But in terms of '90s guys, you'd have to. Darren Williams him. was there, obviously um, not on Nash's level, but Darren Williams was there too. I think a lot of these guys that we're naming are younger guys that have still got a lot to prove in the playoffs. Yeah. Nash is definitely tested. He went up against San Antonio with. Broken nose, bloody, being body checked by Robert Horry, um, and going up, against, going up against the Lakers team as well. So um, he's really tested. I put him and Jason Kidd as the one two. Um, really just based on Jason Kidd's defense and his yeah. real knack for basketball intangibles and being able to lead a really lame, average Nets team to the finals and eventually winning a championship. I'd have to give him the edge, but he's definitely a clear number two for me. Mm. I would throw. I would throw. I think Chauncey Billups isn't ex at Nash's level, but I probably throw him in the conversation. Yeah. I think Chauncey had had a really good ten-year time frame with that with, when he was with the Pistons and so forth. I think Chauncey had a lot of issues starting out in his career with yeah. being uh, drafted by Denver and then coming to Toronto mm -hmm. and really falling short of the expectations of where he was drafted. Um, obviously, going to Detroit it was a perfect fit for him with a defensive green style, uh, and then he obviously flourished there to win the championship. Yeah. Oh, wow, oh, that it's, it's hard. He's definitely in the top five, and I yeah. don't think I don't think anybody would be wrong for uh, their placement. I think I think all the you can argue. Yeah, that. you can argue. Yeah, they, they can all be argued. He's definitely definitely in the top five. Well, one thing's for sure, we're gonna miss Steve Nash and his trips yeah. to Toronto because we all know that they were big sellouts and a tough ticket to get here. But that does it for this edition of On the Block. When we come back next week. We'll look into the first season of the NBA. See you guys later. You had a great year. Great statistics. But your teammates had a great year because of you and your team won its division. What more could we say than congratulations, Steve Nash, 2005-2006, NBA Most Valuable Player. It's incredible. I have no idea how I can express you know, what it feels like.
it's almost uncomfortable to, to be singled out amongst all these great players and to you know, join an even more elite company of guys who have won it twice. I can't quite get my head around it and really know what it means to me yet because it's, it's incredible.